Some of my favorite games are roguelike deck builders, but I'm not quite sure why I haven't made one yet. So far, I've made a survival crafting game, a bro-like, an arcade style game, a fishing game, a virtual pet game, an action sports game, a metroidvania, and a vampire survivors like game. But none of these are genres that I play a lot of. Looking back, I think I took the classic indie dev advice of don't make your dream game and completely overcorrected and went the opposite direction. Enough with that, I think it's time to work on a genre that I actually love. I spent some time brainstorming on what I wanted to do, and I settled on a magic theme where you play as a wizard and your cards would be spells. One thing I knew I wanted to do differently was to try and make all the art for this game. In the past, I've relied heavily on art assets from H.I.O., and in the case of By the Pier and Corefault, the amazing art skills of Goodgiss and Dave, respectively. I try to stretch myself a bit with each new game I make by taking on some new things, so this time, one of those things will be the art. I quite like the hand-drawn art style of indie games like Scrabdackle and Baba is You, so I was thinking of trying to emulate that. From what I've seen, it seems that as long as you have a consistent art direction, the art doesn't have to be as technically impressive for it to still look good. Scrabdackle uses these thick outlines very consistently, and Baba is You has a 3-frame animation loop that makes everything look wobbly, so I decided I was going to try and mash those elements together. I threw together a mock-up and a sprite for what the animation might look like for a card, and then for what the game could look like. When putting it all together, I started thinking about the game design. My idea for the gameplay would be very similar to how Slay the Spire handles things, since that's my favorite game in the genre. There will be a few spots for enemies to be, and your cards can directly target enemies. Each card will have an associated mana cost, and you have a set amount of mana you can use each turn. At the top here, I'm playing around with some ideas for some items that you can buy at the shop. So far, that's generally the same as how Slay the Spire works, but the ways I'm thinking about how this game could be different is that I want everything to be simplified. So I want to reduce the complexity by not having status effects and not having any complex card mechanics. Not quite sure what it will look like, but I'll be iterating on it as I go. Also, I saw this tweet recently about how roguelike deck builders take too long to beat, and I thought about how the portability for the playdate lends itself to shorter play sessions. The reason I'm thinking so much about reducing complexity is because I really want to try and manage the scope of the game. As you've seen, I've made a bunch of games in the last year, and that's for a very specific reason. I'm trying to become the best game developer that I can be, and a lot of the game developers I look up to have one thing in common. They make a lot of games. If you look at John Carmack and John Romero, the legendary developers of Wolfenstein, Doom, Quake, and more, they've made a bunch of games you probably haven't even heard of. Carmack worked on 19 games before the release of Wolfenstein 3D, which doesn't even include any unreleased personal projects. And Romero worked on 48 games before Wolfenstein. Edmund McMillan, developer of Super Meat Boy and The Binding of Isaac, created 46 games before making Super Meat Boy. I think they must be doing something right, so that's the plan I've decided to follow. To do that though, I need to do the hardest part of game development, which is actually finishing a game. Luckily, it seems like the scope I've been able to manage has been growing like a muscle and progressively overloading. This arcade game, Escape from Complex 32, took me about two weeks to make. Seven months later, I was able to make this small Metroidvania game, The King's Dungeon, in the same amount of time. So I feel a bit more comfortable taking on some more scope. Anyways, that's enough about my game dev philosophy. The first task I wanted to tackle for the game was actually getting the cards rendered in the hand. This is going to be a little tricky because if you look at how cards are rendered in other games, they generally move pretty dynamically. The selected card animates up and down when hovered, and when the card is played, the other cards slide in smoothly to fill the gap. I honestly wasn't sure how to handle that at first, since animating everything individually seemed like a pain. There could be a lot of potential edge cases from players doing a bunch of actions very quickly. But an idea came to my mind when I came across this tweet from Deep Knight. Here, he has points that are positions that enemies can move to, and they pick a point to move towards smoothly. The idea of separating the current position and target position seems like a good way to handle the card movement, so I started hacking away at it on livestream. By the way, I usually stream some development and answer questions on Saturday at 9.30am Pacific Time. First, I figured out the math to pre-calculate the positions for where all the cards should be, and I got some cards appearing at those positions. One thing that was important to me was to have the cards be spaced out, and then start squeezing closer together once there are more cards in your hand. Then I looped over all the cards, and lerped the current card position to the target position every frame, so that they would smoothly animate towards the correct destination. This isn't super performant, but there's not much going on in the screen at any given moment, so it's not a big deal. Next, I made it so that the target position of the selected card would be a little bit higher. That gives it the nice effect where the selected card animates up, and you can quickly switch between cards and everything animates as you expect without me having to handle any weird edge cases because of how we're not directly controlling the position. Last part of the card animations was just to make a card playing animation, and you can see how the other 
cards automatically move in to fill the gap because of how everything was set up. I did some additional work off stream to get some icons for the cards, as well as the HUD elements. The process for making the art is super simple. As mentioned before, I'm trying to adhere to strictly using only thick lines in a sort of hand-drawn style, so I have to purposely draw the lines pretty haphazardly. If it's too straight, it doesn't quite fit. Then, using the onion skin mode in A-Sprite, I can redraw over the previous frame making sure to be slightly off the mark to create some sort of wobbly movement, like in Baba's You. I've decided to do a two-frame animation instead of three to make it a little quicker to draw, though honestly it doesn't save that much time since it's so quick to draw the assets. You can see that I have the card cost here too, which I have hooked up to the data table in the back end that I'm storing the card data in. I then added in the text for the HUD. The font I'm using is one I picked up on itch called Wacky Joe, which I chose because of how I felt like it fit in with the hand-drawn style, and I also just love the name of the font. After that, I did another stream, this time with the goal of adding enemies into the game. I created this sort of blocky enemy as a placeholder, but I kind of like him, so I'll probably keep him in the game. In the stream, I worked mainly on trying to get the enemy UI displaying, which required a bit of math to try and figure out how to center the icon and text properly based on the length. It took a couple tries. I also made it so that playing a card would use the appropriate amount of mana. Currently, the cards don't have any functionality yet, so I did some mining off stream and started by adding this reticle that you can use to select an enemy to target. Doesn't do anything quite yet, but at least the framework from switching from a card selection state to a different state is there. After this was to add some simple damaging functionality. The lightning spell does AoE and the fireball does single target, as expected. Though the flashing isn't cutting it for the damage feedback, so I added a little knockback animation to sell the hit some more. You might notice that I'm just manually drawing cards, but in reality, there should be some sort of turn system that discards and draws your hand and switches to an enemy turn to allow the enemies to attack. For that, I learned how to use Koro routines for the first time, which is a cool Lua feature that allows you to create and switch between different execution contexts. There's honestly not a lot of great resources about it online, so I might have to make a tutorial on them at some point. I also created a few new animations. The first one was the enemy attacking, which I just used an animator for, and animated the enemy along two lines. I added the same exact lurping code I used with the cards on the enemies, so they'll always smoothly move back into place at the end of any animation. The other animation is the discard hand animation, which just throws all the cards to the right. But when an enemy died, I wasn't handling that properly. No problem, it was just a quick fix, and you can see that all the enemies lurp to their target positions, just like with the cards in the hand. The enemy just disappearing was a bit weird, so I added a small animation where the enemy falls down off screen and then gets removed. You might notice that the enemies have a random action, either attacking or healing, but the heal has no animation quite yet. I added this temporary animation because I wasn't quite sure what to do with it. Even though I'm just trying to get everything working, I like adding polish early since it makes development more enjoyable. I still felt like it was missing a bit of polish, so I added in a screen shake when the enemy attacked and it tied it together pretty well. You can create some screen shake really easily using the set offset function. Then I had to go back and fix that heal animation because honestly it was just an eyesore. So I started off by creating some particle effects in this tool called Sprite Mancer. The final result ended up looking a lot better. There's a bunch left to do, like allowing you to view your deck, having progression between levels, a shop, a bunch of spells and enemies and more, but that'll have to wait until next time. In the meantime, I'll be releasing development builds of the game over on my Patreon if you want to mess around with this and help me playtest once I get a full game loop going. You can also see the source code since I'll be dropping that there too, as well as the source code of all my previous games. I've added a new tier where you can see detailed commented source code from me as well, which includes the last game I worked on, Corefall. Anyways, see you next time with some more progress on this game.